Hey, it's RW Rushing live out of South Austin with another dumb comedy wannabe something. I have no idea. I got a handwritten letter from a young girl, 13 years old, who she says she wants to be a writer. She says, I want to be a writer. That's what she said. Then she included a handwritten little play um, in three acts that she wrote by hand on notebook paper, and her handwriting was easy to read. Now, she's like, I got someone's niece or someone I kind of barely know, but somehow somebody said, well, write our W letter. He somehow knows something about writing. I don't know. So sure enough, take my address, and she sends me your written letter. And I read her little story. <clears throat> That's the best story I ever read. I was like, God, this girl's got it all figured out. You know what? A lot of kids under the age of 13, they really do have it all figured out. A lot of kids at age five <laughs> really have it all figured out. My daughters are like that. They at age five, they just had it all figured out. That's what I did as dad. So anyway, anyway, here comes this girl, a 13-year-old girl. And she wrote this amazing little short story. It's a three-act Play is what it was. Dialogue, beginning, middle, end, all that kind of stuff. She goes, um, but she says, I want to be a writer. <laughs> First of all, you already are a writer. And then what did she say, she's like, well, right now I'm, I'm reading Aesop's Fables again. I'm thinking about doing something with that. What do you think about Aesop's Fables? And she specifically said, you know, this whole cricket hint thing, sorry, don't make no sense. What about that? Signed, I'm going to say her name, signed A. So I kind of checked it out, and then uh, I wrote her right back, like that minute. I just wrote a real short letter, and the letter was real short, but let me go ahead and freestyle and breathe a little bit and tell you my version of Aesop's Fables. What I told her is, uh, read Aesop's Fables again and look around the world. Look, I hear it very simple. Aesop's Fables, uh, cricket plays, ants work, and then winter comes, cricket got no food, been playing around, and the ants working all the time, they got the food. So the cricket starves to death. That's Aesop's Fables. That's it. We all learned Aesop's Fables, hopefully. We're two years old. That's the kind of jackass shit our Skinnerian Pavlovian parents taught us, Aesop's Fables. <laughs> well, I never did buy Aesop's Fables. I never made sense to me. Like, I don't even know how the world works. So I kind of told her something like that in this letter. I said... You just go back, and you're a writer. You go ahead and talk about Aesop's Fable, but just twist it up and then tell your version of that story. So she got to figure that out, but I thought about that. I was like, well, make a dumb, one of these dumb little comedy things. I'm going to tell you my version of Aesop's Fables, and this is how I raised my daughters from birth because not only do they want to hear a story before they go to bed, but my daughters, every time I saw them, like, Daddy tells the story, and I just... Just like this, I just sure. What's so about? They had that. That's what happened. My daughters had that Tang Aesop's Fables illustrated, and something like they're asked about them. So this is how I would tell them the stories. It's like Dad, Cricket, and something, something. What's that about? Something like that. So this is the way I used to talk about. Her. Well, they're probably like they're learning how to read pretty young, but let's say they're three. What's that about? So I go, well, girls. Uh, sure enough. Uh, there's a cricket named Joe, and that's his name. His name's Joe. He's a cricket. But sure enough, he had a fiddle, and he's real good at rocking that fiddle because he practiced so much all the time. All I thought about was making ants dance. That's all he ever thought about because it's right there next to him. Dang ants are just freaking marching around working all the time. Oh, cricket don't care about working. He just wants to play that fiddle, right? And all he wants to think about is making ants dance. He don't know nothing. So he practice, practice. All he think about is how do I make the ants dance? So he's not too far away. That fiddle's pretty loud. So he's just over there rocking that fiddle. And pretty soon he got pretty good at it. And he's playing dance music on a fiddle. That's old Joe the Cricket. Wow, those ants running around doing all that work for that mean queen ant. All the time, like, ah, if I don't work, 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 that queen ant going to fire me. And what am I going to do? Wander around looking for another ant ball to work for? Well, they got a mean queen ant, too. I don't want to do that. Plus, if you know ants, I want to see ants for sisters. So I'm hanging out here with my sisters, and I guess already was. Work, work, work. Now in Aesop's Fables, it says, the ants worked and stored up food, right? And the cricket didn't store food because he's busy playing the fiddle. Therefore, when the winter came, 
Uh, the ants were fine because they worked all the time. They had all this food. I guess they'd chill out in that dumb hole in the ground. Just, I don't know what they're doing, eating their food, I guess. What I want to know is where did they go to the bathroom in that hole and how did they deal with that? I guess they got some kind of septic system down there. I think they're pretty smart. Ask EO Wilson. Of course you ask EO. And I have a friend who used to hang out with EO. That's a cool dude. Anyway, there's EO Wilson ants working, working, working. And then in the winter, old Joe the Fiddler Cricket, he ain't got no food. And he dies because he's hungry. And that's Aesop Fables. I go, that ain't how it works. What Aesop was up to, but he don't roll like I roll. Let me tell you how I roll. Here's what's up. Joe practiced, practiced that fiddle till he can really make ants dance. It's pretty easy to do if that's all you think about. It doesn't take long. Sure enough, he starts rocking that fiddle for dance music for ants. All those ants are there. They're all sisters just working, working, working. They hate that queen ant. They hate that, but that's just their deal. You hear that Joe Fiddler playing dance music for ants. Finally, Friday night at 6 p.m., they're like, the hell with this? I'm going to get my paycheck and go hang out with Joe the Fiddler Cricket. Sure enough, a couple of them come the first time. Sure enough, they start dancing. Then their other sister ants still over there working. Look over there. See them dance. Like, boom, the hell with this? I'm going to go dance with my sister. Next thing you know, every dang ant, that whole ant paws over there dancing Joe the Fiddler. Sure enough, the queen ants like, where'd everybody go? Well, if everybody walks off at the same time, there's nothing that boss can do. I don't care if you're the queen ant or not. So if everybody leaves at the same time, that's it. Don't care what the boss says. It's over. And that's called a union. That's called a union. That's called power. Power in solidarity. Anyway, so Fiddler Guide, the ants dance, and everybody's having a real good time. That's every Friday, Saturday night, <clears throat> forever. Then here comes winter. Sure enough, ants got all the food. Old Fiddler Joe, so like, oh, it's getting cold, man. Do I just come out and dance in the cold? What I'm going to do? What I'm going to do? What I'm going to do? Wow. <laughs> Those ants worker checks are like, God, we had so much fun with Fiddler Joe. He's over there hungry. Pa, let's give him our food, give it to him. We've got to take care of him over the winter so that when springtime comes again, we can all dance again and have a good time. So, sure enough, they bring Joe all kinds of food and. Then he likes beer, so they bring him all kinds of beer. Well, he's got real specific taste of beer because he's a, he's a freaking uh, cricket fiddler. So he's like, oh, I want, um, <laughs> what's something goofy? Uh, what's that, Hogs Bottom? Let's just say Hogs Bottom. I don't think of that German weird beer. It's called something like Hogs Bottom. Well, I want Hogs Bottom beer from Belgium. Where did he get that? I don't know if figured out. So sure enough, those ants ask around, well, here comes the Hogs Bottom beer straight out of Belgium. He likes that, so they give him that. He's eating that food. He's drinking the hospital. He takes a nap, wakes up, goes, how about some Jägermeister? So they bring him a bottle of Jäger, and he goes, hey, tell you what, girls. Come here, let's polish off this bottle of Jäger. So it's getting a little cold, but they do that. Fine. And they kind of start a little fire. They'll get warm. They've got plenty of food. They're all chilling out. It's Friday night. It's Saturday night. And sure enough, there's some, like, baby ant, like something, uh, some kind of egg ant shells down there. And those are the babies. Somebody worry about those babies. So sure enough, one of the ants runs over to the other hive. Well, they'll start working. She finds one. She goes, want a baby's hit? Yeah, what's the money? Uh, we'll make it worth your while. Fine. Get that ant. Go down there and take those babies. That's called a babysitter. Then they're right back to partying every Friday, Saturday. The babies are taking over the babysitter. Well, she's cheap. And they just party on until it finally gets just too cold. They got to go back and go to sleep in that dang hole in the ground, whatever. Fiddler and goes, well, I got plenty of food. I got some hog's bottom beer. And I still got a bunch of Jaeger. I'm just going to find a bunch of leaves and crawl in there and just chill out. Plenty warm. And they just hang out. That's it. And then in the springtime, it feels pretty good. Fiddler comes right back, starts playing that fiddle, and it all starts over again. That is how life actually works if you can play a musical instrument. Girls, now go to sleep. Daddy loves you. Good night.